Demolisha. Welcome to Off the Ranch. This is Earl. Earl is my Ram 2500 heavy duty, powered by a Cummins 6.7 liter engine, turbocharged. It's pretty sweet. This is my five ton truck, powered by an 8.3 liter Cummins diesel engine, turbocharged. It's pretty sweet as well. Also, the guy who sent me the battlefield damage assessment and repair manual for the five ton, thank you, you're amazing. Needless to say, I have become quite the Cummins fan lately because this truck is so awesome. The 6.7 outside, the fourth gen Cummins is great. This one's cool because it's all mechanical. There's no computer, nothing like that. To turn the power up, you turn a screw to dump more fuel in there. You put a bigger turbo on it. It's all mechanical stuff. Now, I have heard tons of talking in all the Cummins forums everywhere about how awesome a first gen Cummins engine is. A 12 valve Cummins is what they're referred to. Now, I don't have that. The 12 valve is a 5.9 liter. It came in I think the first gens are like 88 or 89 through 93. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it's close to that. That's the first gen 12 valve Cummins. And I hear everybody talking about how awesome they are. And they're awesome because they're super reliable and super easy to work on, from what I've read. But like I already have a fourth gen. The fourth gen is better, more horsepower, better fuel economy. It's a better engine in a lot of ways, but like, I want to know what a first gen is like because everyone talks about how awesome they are. But when I have a fourth gen and then I got the first gen's big brother, it's a very similar setup here, all mechanical, easy to work on, but just way bigger. Like why would I ever get a first gen? But then I'm like, do I want to go my whole life without ever experiencing what everyone talks about is the best Cummins ever, the 5912 valve turbo diesel? No, I don't want to live my life like that. So then I was like, how can I justify purchasing another Cummins turbo diesel? And then yesterday, we made a video with a lot of fire. Whenever we do videos with lots of fire, I like to have some way to put out the fire. Like for instance, when Goldie burned, we did not have a great way to put out the fire. We were filling up with like a faucet and dumping buckets on it. it was. It was sketchy, could have burned the whole ranch down when that happened. So on that recent fire, I had this. This is my dad's sprayer tank. He actually bought this thing a long time ago, like 15 years ago, to spray moss out of trees. We get this stuff called ball moss in this area. He also uses it for other random things, but it also works really good for fire prevention. Whenever I do something with fire, I borrow it. It's on a nice trailer. We tow it around behind Earl. The problem is, this is my dad's sprayer. and. He needs it back to do his things with it. So I was like, man, should I buy my own little sprayer and sprayer trailer? That's pretty handy. And then I was like, what if I just put it in the bed of another truck? I make a dedicated fire truck for Demolition Ranch. I could use that a lot. And then we'd be more apt to do fire videos because, well, we'd have fire suppression. Ideally, I'd probably get a bigger tank. That is a 100 gallon water tank right there. I mean, you could fit another another one of those right next to it if it was in the truck bed. So I'm thinking 200 gallon tank, which should be, let's see, water's like eight pounds per gallon. So times 200 is like, mm, that's a lot. 1600 pounds plus the motor fuel tank is probably another I don't know, let's say 300, it's under 2,000 pounds. That should work. I'd get a diesel three quarter or one ton truck. That should be able to hold 2,000 pounds in the bed easy. And then it's not in a trailer, so we can get to places more easily and back up more easily. Yesterday with the trailer, we were going down a big hill and like it was a little sketchy getting there with a trailer full of water. But if it was all in the bed of the truck, it'd be much easier. So I set out to find a 12 valve four wheel drive truck that I could make into a fire truck. And Demolisha, I think I found it. I went to the bank and got some money and I'm heading out to meet this guy and see if this truck is everything he says it is. I'm not gonna take you guys along because it's always awkward to be like, hey, nice to meet you. Also, I have a lot of subscribers and they're wanting to look at your face right now. So I'm not gonna be too weird, not any weirder than normal. So I'll, uh, I'll just come back in a little bit, let you guys know, you know, how it went, if I have a new truck to show you, or if I'm like, hey, I'm looking for a first gen, because that one was terrible. But before I start on that journey, I want to say thank you to our video sponsor, 
Raycon. Inspired by underdogs with big dreams, Raycon aims to empower go-getters around the world by creating the next wave in wireless audio technology. They offer their wireless earbuds in a range of fun colors and patterns and are super comfortable and come with a variety of fit options. They're great for working from home, working out, or listening to music and podcasts for hours. Six hours, in fact, plus seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, more compact for a comfortable, noise-isolating fit. And the Raycon Everyday E25s would make a great holiday gift for someone who is special to you because it's something they can use literally every day, whether they are at work or at play, at home or on the go. Now is the time to get the best price of the year on Raycons, but hurry, this offer is only available for a limited time. Go to buyraycon.com slash off the ranch to get 20% off your order. Raycon earbuds start about half the price as other premium wireless earbud brands, but they sound just as amazing as other top audio brands. Thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this episode of Off the Ranch. Now wish me luck. Let's see if I can buy a new truck. <laughs> you rhymed. Hey guys, good news. I got it! Definitely a bit of a bumpy truck! I think the tires are not balanced or something. We, we got a bit of shimmy, but it, it's driving down the highway. Woohoo! Driving next to Earl. Came down here in Earl. So we got the two boys running together for the first time. Alright, I'll show you more about the truck when I get back. I gotta go pick up my kids in it. I have three kids, gotta fit them all in this bench seat. Yeah, it'll be fine. Came out to the bunker to pick up the kids. Alright, we gotta go find my truck. What do you think? Excited. You like? Uh -huh. Who's I'm excited? Me. Girls are. We'll totally fit in that single cab truck. It's totally fine. See? Tons of room, right? No. Plenty of room? No. no. Probably just sell the Raptor now. You love it? No. Told you we'd fit. She just took the seatbelt off and goes, look how dirty my shirt is. Without further ado, it is my great honor to introduce to you the newest member of the Demolition Fleet. You see the drip, yeah, I fit it up. Hop in my car and I get it up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drip, yeah, I fit it up. Hop in my car and I get it up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. No, 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 no. Go high, go low, low, low. Like spinning in a 644. Cash money like 504. Ball like AD24. No sleep, me, mo, mo, mo. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drip, yeah, I fit it up. Hop in my car and I get it up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drip, yeah, I fit it up. Power windows? That work? What a treat. This is a 1991 and a half. It's a Dodge Ram W250. If you're wondering what those noises are, that's the six year old <laughs> with a balloon. Custom headliner in here. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The seat actually, it's gotta be not 30 years old like this truck because the seat does not have any holes in it or anything. Interesting color, but I like it. And we're going for fire trucks. So that looks perfect. Does have no carpet. It's got rubber all in the bottom, which is great for a ranch truck that we're gonna use. Uh, they at one point rhino lined it, and it probably looked pretty good, and then it's just been cracking. Not a big deal for what we need it for. It does not matter what it looks like. 37 inch tires on it. It does have a bit of a vibration. Uh, hopefully it's just needs some new tires. I think we can get uh, some better ones on here than these things. 37 by 12 and a half. 17. Give me some new 37s. Get some BFGs on this thing and see if that smooths it out a little bit. Maybe it's not the tires. Maybe it's something in the drive line. I don't know. I mean, it might be that something down here is out of balance because it definitely is bump, 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 especially at highway speeds, but it does go highway speeds. Has some Fox suspension on it. So it's got some new shock absorbers up in there. He said he put these springs on it as well. Um, so it has some new springs. Got an Air Dog sticker over there because it has Where'd it go? Air dog lift pump over here so we can get more fuel to the engine. It's got a aftermarket, but old. <laughs> Bumper on it, but it's winch ready, as you can see. And I actually have a winch that I was going to put on Earl but I was waiting on a piece for that bumper to come in, but they haven't made it yet. It's not ready yet. So I have a winch waiting. Maybe I'll just put it on this thing. I thought about sticking a winch on the back of this, but I got one on the front. Why would I need one on the back? <laughs> 
Nice. 12 valve, 5.9 liter turbo diesel. Cummins turbo diesel. This is an intercooled engine, so I think the maybe the early 91s or just the 90s did not have an intercooler so this one got the upgrade with the intercooler so more horsepower looks like not a factory breather that he has on there especially with the bungee cords holding it in there a little extra horsepower there i don't know a ton else about this motor though i know that he did rework some of the electrical because these things are notoriously really bad with electrical he went in and put a bunch of fuses in so we got fuse box here fuse box there so he replaced i can't i think they call them fusible links that uh this thing had stock i'm not sure if that's totally true but he went in put a bunch of fuses in there rewired a bunch of stuff because these things are notoriously bad at that i don't know if that's a stock turbo i can't remember what he said, I don't know a ton about five, nine, 12 valves, but that's why I got this thing, because I used to not know much about 8.3 Cummins either, and now I know more about them. And I really want to learn about the five, nine, because everyone says it's the best. Time will tell. One more pretty cool feature that this thing has is it has this bed, right? I mean, just a totally normal bed, right? Wrong. <laughs> it goes higher than that, but there's wheel spacers in the back. Look at that thing. This guy installed a dump bed back there. So it's got a pretty new cylinder and arm back there. Let's go higher. What's the worst that could happen? There went all the wheel spacers. Uh, you can also see there is uh, sort of a little rust in the bed. There's some, some speed holes. That's fine though. Totally fine for what we're gonna be doing with it. Money. Demolisha, we got a new toy that we are going to turn into one heck of a work truck, one heck of a ranch truck, one heck of a fire truck. Also, since it's going to be our fire truck, I've already named it. This first gen Dodge Ram Cummins turbo diesel shall henceforth be referred to as Chief. Demolition, let's welcome Chief to the fleet of vehicles here at Demolition Ranch. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Off the Ranch, I'm talking about Demolition Ranch. I love you! Not see you next time. Oh. Hey, what camera is that? Number. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Mare.